<laughs> What's going on guys? Welcome to part two of the Human Flying Drone Project. Obviously because this is part two, that means there's a part one. So if you haven't seen that, definitely go check it out. So in this video, hopefully we'll get all of the motors and electronics finally mounted, all of the propellers on as well, and maybe do a little bit of testing. Now I'm first gonna run it with four motors, and that'll be enough to lift the frame and maybe like a smaller payload. Um, but if we get this working, then we can scale it up to an octocopter, which will hopefully be able to lift a lot more weight. I don't know why I said it like that, I'm not that fat. Okay, it was the holidays, maybe maybe I ate a little bit, you know, none, none of your business. Point is, it's gonna be a cool video. So first thing we have to do is rip apart this giant fan I already have that I just recently used to go skiing with. Check that video out if you haven't, but uh, we need the motor from this, so just cue, cue the montage. Oh, I wanna fly. Guys, I think we're gonna need a bigger work table. All right, guys, we're going. Furnace is loud. Excuse the noise. We're gonna test out this motor to make sure it's spinning in the right direction. We're gonna hook up a battery and control it with a servo tester. I always get scared when doing this. So loud. Right now, it's going counterclockwise. So that means the one on the other end has to go clockwise. This will cancel out the torque and make sure the drone doesn't turn into the Tasmanian devil. Oh, I've made that reference before. You're slipping, Jake. Now we pretty much need to test all of the other motors and make sure they're all spinning correctly as well. Figure out the flight controller situation and yeah, build, build, build the rest of the drone. No, I mean, no sh So now we have all of the motors mounted on, connected to the ESCs, and they all spin in the correct orientation. So next up, let's figure out how to integrate this flight controller right here. This device right here, hardest part is actually opening the box. Why does every, every company does this now? Like, every company has this Apple type box. This is the DJI flight controller, open it up, and it's really just this tiny little, uh, little device right here, but this thing, means I don't actually have to know how to fly anything. So how this works is instead of plugging a motor directly into a receiver, instead you plug all four motors into one end and the receiver into the other, and it does some sort of wizardry that uh, allows this thing to fly. And it can support up to eight blades, and also has all these other things you plug into it as well. You trying to figure out what all this stuff is on the fly. No pun intended on the fly. Got him! It comes with GPS an LED, uh, a power management unit, and the most obscure thing of all is a universal serial bus cable. Boom, bet you never seen one of those. I did look up what USB meant, I didn't know, so. Alright guys, doing very important stuff right now. Wiring up all of the electronics as you saw. And now we're hooking up the remote control. Pretty much just follow the manual for the um, power modules, the LED, uh, the GPS, uh, the motors. Those all just plug in. But uh, we're going to be controlling the drone with this remote. So this has a bunch of different channels, I think six. So channel one is moving this joystick this way. Channel two is up and down. Channel three is this one up and down. 
Channel four is moving this side to side. Um, and then we have some buttons up here for five and six. So this transmits it to the receiver and then the flight controller has inputs for each one of these channels. I'm gonna have to calibrate this and everything, but uh, I don't know, I just thought that was kind of interesting. I haven't done too much stuff with RC, so uh, yeah, this, this seems like an appropriate place to start, human-sized drone. I never really liked wading into the pool. I would always cannonball, so this is pretty much metaphorically that. A full send, as they say. So we've got everything all set up. Ah, be quiet, you. It needs to be played with like every minute. So needy. No, but right now we are calibrating the remote control. I've got the DJI software on my computer right here. Whenever I move a joystick over here, you can see it responding on the computer. So I'll move this one. You can see the up and down channel is E on the computer and left to right is uh, the A channel right there and a combination of the two. And then the other stick right here is uh, the other two channels, so. Ah, zoom you back out there. Nope, not in, not in. Out there we go. So I think we got it figured out. I'm gonna do a little bit more, but then I wanna try running up these motors uh, without propellers just to see if we can get like the correct response. I think I think that's the next, next best safe thing to do. Is, uh, can't fly if you don't got propellers. That's a lie. Rockets, don't have propellers. Gliders, don't have propellers. Although gliders don't really fly, they more fall. I don't care what anyone said. Actually thermals, UFOs. Just testing out the motors right now. It's got M1, M2, M3, M4, which is uh, one, two, three, and four. There it is. If we just click these buttons, uh, we can get the motors to run. So click it, as you can see. So now we have to calibrate this drone. Um, so that pretty much means like spinning it around 360, upright, rotating it. So uh, I'm gonna try and do it down here in, with limited space. Also, my foot really hurts because I ran like 10 miles yesterday. And I don't run at all. So there's a good chance it's gonna go horribly wrong and be very funny, so that's why I'm recording it. What could go wrong? Oh, careful. Ah. So it turns out if the drone is blinking red, which it is, means calibration failed. So I have to redo this. One eternity later. It works! Let's go! That's how we do it. Ugh. That took so long to figure out. So I think we're ready to finally throw the propellers on and uh, test this out. Just one little problem. It's, what is it, January? January, and uh, that means there's a ton of snow. Also, the drone back there will not fit through this door currently as it is, so I have to disassemble it. Let's first just see how much snow is uh, off when I try and open this. Lift with the knees, shoulder press. Tight. Jesus. Hey, now you're a man. Got everything in pieces, got Pretty much just took the two arms off, so we got one arm there. As soon as I was ready to test this thing, I knew I was racing the storm, I was racing the dark. This happened. <sighs> it is snowing a lot. We even shoveled an area where we are gonna test it. Ugh, New England, you win this round. You got it all set up, and then something like this happens. But I figure it's better to wait for better conditions to do a very first test than be stuck out there in the snow, in the dark. So uh, yeah, I guess cut to when we test this next. And what's up future Jake? Go. The weather is finally appropriate for testing. Got the drone here all set up with all the propellers. I'm thinking that snow is actually gonna help us because uh, we crash, you know, hopefully the propellers or anything like that won't break. But honestly, I'm just hoping nothing blows up. We've attached some weights to the uh, bottom of it to uh, stop it from, you know, flying away. Moment of truth, gonna hook everything up. Got the controller right here and I will be very far in the opposite direction. And we are live. Ah. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna be over there. Enjoy the show. It's tipping a little bit. I don't know what that means. It's a giant tornado though. <laughs> well, nothing's broke yet. Take two. No!
Well, the thing flipped over, so we're gonna assess the damage here. Just going to disconnect all the cables though. Disconnect that battery. All right, the bomb is disarmed. The damage assessed real quick. This blade is broken. So is this one. So as you saw, the drone definitely had enough power. So here's what actually happened. I was pressing the throttles and all the propellers were working, but the drone wasn't coming up evenly. Like one side was tilting up uh, higher than the other. So I tried to counteract that at first with the other joystick. And then as you saw, it kind of skidded off into the side. For the second test though, tried to do it again. The same thing happened. It was lifting up only on one side. So I did the same thing. I tried to counteract it while hitting the throttle to hopefully like, you know, like bump it up. So it would turn while going up and then hopefully it would, I would be able to control it in the air. But I must have hit the throttle forward just a little bit because then it started rolling forward. So then I tried to counteract that and it finally just flipped over and landed in the snow as you saw. But I honestly think the snow helped us a little bit because uh, two propellers that were near the ground, those broke. But uh, actually all the electronics appear to be fine uh, because they landed in some nice fluffy snow. So assuming I can just dry them off with a hairdryer and let them sit for a while before turning them on again. I think we should be good. Plus the snow looked just really cool. It looked like a giant tornado thing was actually going. It was so cool. Uh, so yeah, learned a lot from this flight. Flight, I'm pretty sure it got airborne at least a little bit. I believe I can fly. But I think what I'm gonna do is turn the sensitivity way down, throw in some new blades, and then we should be back in business. Anyways guys, that about wraps up this part. Uh, comment down below your suggestions, criticisms, ideas. Make sure to give this video a like if you did enjoy it. Subscribe for more, follow me on Instagram. This, uh, this left me super excited, so thank you guys very much for watching. We'll catch you in the next part. Peace.